Okay, so I'm going to start this video off talking about cuckolding and BDSM and femdom and all that. If you already understand what that is, then I am going to put a chapter in this video and you can just click straight to that so we can go through all the things that this content creator has done. I'm just laying the foundation for the first 20 minutes. So, like I said, just click the chapter if you want to get into the content creator. But if you need to know what cooking and all that is, then I would suggest watching the first 20 minutes because the rest of the video will be somewhat confusing. Okay, goodbye. So man, normally we come in here with a fancy little intro. You know, we like to have fun, have some good laughs. But uh, man, I was making this video and uh, y'all remember me coming across this individual right here. And uh, I'm gonna not lie to you, man. This person and everything that they do is so harmful. I had no choice but to make this video because what she says is so dangerous that I have to step up and do this. Now, um, <laughs> I normally try to be nice and be kind and I'm gonna not, I'm gonna try not to attack her directly, but I'm gonna attack everything that she said, man. And I'm gonna burn every one of her ideas to the ground. This is going to be one of the deepest dives I've ever done on this channel. Um, this is one of the sickest I've ever felt on this channel. Um, and this is one of the worst people I've ever covered on this channel. And she is starting to uh, gain some fame on YouTube. And dude, it's just disgusting what she says. So we're going to go ahead and get right into this video. And uh, man, just buckle up. It's going to be a long one. Hi guys, my name is Bella and today I want to answer a very interesting question that I have been asked on my Snapchat, which is, are you really happy? Okay, and that question really made my creative juices flow, so <laughs> that's why I decided to go a bit um, into depth about it, right? So, um, the thing is, you or me or whoever is only as happy as they allow themselves to be okay they understand that like if you ask me that question a couple of years ago i'd be just like um no because i need this and that and whatever then i will be happy okay but the thing is that i got all of those things but it did not make me happy, right? Like, I just felt like, mm, that's it. Like, what's next, you know? Like, I want more. <laughs> and I just feel like that's so funny because then I realized that I will never be happy if I let my external circumstances create the happiness for me, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. It sounds wonderful so far, right? She's just trying to be happy. She's just trying to live her life in this happy world all in her head, right? But you're going to see the things that she does to get this happiness, the great extent she's going to go through to get this happiness. You're going to slowly see this woman for who she really is. She started off making this kind of video just to get you pulled in. But it gets worse. <laughs> oh, man, it gets so much worse. Let's continue. Give me the same, if not more, than when I experienced that in real life, right? Like, what is it that you could possibly want, honestly? What is it that you could possibly want that you can't imagine? You know what I mean? So, um, that's why I believe that being realistic is the worst mistake you can happen because that means it's the worst mistake that you can make because that just means that you let the outside forces or outside circumstances affect you and you're just a victim of them. You're not a victim of them. You can create whatever you want to experience inside of there okay so you are only as happy as you let yourself be right here you're only as rich as you let yourself be right here it's all in your head remember what she's saying right now because it, it plays such a good role she believes that she deserves all these good things right She's going to continue to push this narrative of imagination and it's all in your head. You can't be realistic. But the problem is, is in order to pursue your dreams and to do anything in this life, you have to be realistic. I have mentioned that I do things to make me happy, such as pursuing writing and doing YouTube. But that is something that is real. I know being happy is not always something that is sustainable. So I avoid allowing myself to fake it. If I feel down, I make sure not to 
avoid the feeling by drinking or getting high or falling into my food addiction, notice that this video in particular is the same concept that I mentioned in my Shifting Realities video. I mainly left my opinion out of that video because I wanted to stick with the idea instead of turning it into a video solely based on my opinion. However, this is not the type of video as you will see. <laughs> I think that you must be careful constantly imagining things and letting them become real in your mind. This will affect you because people don't live in your mind. They will not act like you want them to. I burned a lot of bridges and hurt a lot of people because I would manipulate situations so they would play in my favor. And I will admit it did put me in some bad situations. But as you see, she wants people to act exactly like she wants them to act. And she is so manipulative in the way she goes about these strategies. And it all starts here with her thinking, I have to create this reality in my mind. I have to be this. I have to be that. And she would do anything and everything to get there. I honestly do enjoy making content for submissive men, meaning that I enjoy making dominatrix content. Um, me being able to humiliate men. <laughs> <laughs> or two. I want you to hear that part right quickly. She wants to humiliate men. And you notice that laugh, that laugh I heard so much making this video. But that laugh right there, anytime she mentions the harm to men, she laughs. It's always something funny to her. It's always something that makes her feel giggly inside. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting when she talks about how she loves to humiliate men. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a second. But I really want to point that out. She makes content because she enjoys humiliating men. And that's not all. <laughs> or to um, even tasks to do or just dress them up, whatever. Makes me feel really powerful. And it makes me feel really like, um, yeah, like I can do whatever I want. And... She can do whatever she wants and she feels so powerful, man. This plays into everything that's going to happen over the next year of her life. She loves that feeling of having power over somebody. And I don't really think it's just men. I think she just enjoys having power over anyone. But she attributes it to men because she can hide behind that guise of being a femdom. So I don't think it's just the male thing. I think she just loves having power and she loves being able to do what she wants. Yeah, like... I can do whatever I want and they are going to pay me for that. So I really do enjoy making content for submissive men. I enjoy making sessions. I enjoy um, doing all these type of things. So in this way, I love you guys. You are amazing. <laughs> You're amazing. Uh, please continue being you. And that's amazing that you are trying to explore yourselves and that you um, decided to go this way. You rock. You rock. Okay. You're going to notice this push of her going back and forth between liking submissive men and also clowning submissive men. She's going to say, you guys are so amazing, but then also go against exactly what she just said and say, hey, but submissive men are actually a problem. We shouldn't have them. You will fall for this manipulation. So please pay attention as she continues to manipulate the audience which for her is an only a male audience. It's going to go back and forth with this whole, you're great, but also you're not great. But we have to talk about the other side of this, which is um, real life, okay? Because I think emasculated men, so men that are not really men, meaning men that are sissies, men that are this kind of like submissive whatever, um, they are a very big threat to society and I don't mean like threat like they're gonna do something but the society needs men that can take lead okay it needs men that can stand their ground and build things and there's like a theory that all this matrix and whatever is trying to emasculate men and make and how do you call it in the feminine way like make women not feminine because when they are thrown out of balance it's easier to control them because the men are not gonna stand up against the system and the women um see what when women are in their feminine energy they are very uh, spiritual right uh, very connected to 
everything around and intuition and whatnot but as soon as they are forced to be in their masculine they lose this okay so you're gonna see once again she encourages submissive men but she just said that you need men to be strong in society she goes on to talk about how if there is no strong men society tends to crumble society tends to struggle with that and women need to be more in their feminine nature but this is going to contradict everything she says later but the reason she does this is she's i'm not going to call her a dumb person or anything like that but she knows what she's doing she is trying to play both sides of this i want y'all to remember this word savior complex OK, she is just like a firefighter who starts the fire and then puts it out so she can be the hero. Hi, guys. My name is Bella. I am your favorite adult content creator. And in this video, we are going to talk about cuckolding, what it is, all the necessary terms you need to know when it comes to cuckolding and how you can become one. So the word cuckold actually comes from the bird Kaku, or I don't know how it's pronounced actually, which is a bird that lays eggs in different, in other birds' nests. Similarly, cuckolding means that um, it's generally a man. I'm not sure if it also works like a woman can be a cuckold, but this is generally a man who enjoys his wife or his girlfriend to um, engage in sexual activities with different men. Um, and so it's basically like a cheating with a glitter, I would say, and why they like it, all right? So the reason why these men like seeing um, other women, I mean, their women uh, with other men is mostly because they themselves are not gifted enough, they're not big enough, they're maybe not skilled enough. So they prefer their women to have fun with a real man. And this real man is referred to as the bull. Now, I'm going to lay down the foundation here. Um, this is what I'm doing currently. I'm laying down the foundation as we get more into this video. But I want to talk about this cuckolding thing because she's going to bring it up a lot. And she has a lot of misconceptions about it. And I disagree with it completely. Now, there is a misconception that comes with cuckolding. And in my video on cucks that y'all may have saw, I did not push my opinion. Right. I tried my best just to stick with the facts. But there was some information that I didn't include because I knew I would address it in this video here. I did mention, however, that most men do not want to be a cuck, which means that most people do not want to be in an open relationship of any kind. You will only see these numbers go up in a niche circle. OK, the rise of the adult industry is why a lot of men would turn to cucking, because let's be honest. Where do men normally see other men's private parts and comparing them to their own? How would you know that you're not pleasing your wife enough when there are numerous toys out there to help enhance the experience? Why would you think about another man who could do the job? This happened with those who view spicy content day in, day out. You listen to women moaning. You watch them make the O face. You watch their feet curl. And you assume this is what intercourse should always be. You think this is real and it's not just acting or forced actions. The industry is not dumb. They know what you want to see. That's why they have the money shot. That's why they use certain angles. That's why they pick smaller girls. They zoom in on the face, whether it's pain or pleasure. They don't care. All they care about is you staying on the site for hours. And every time you get in the mood, you will be right back on the website. Once you have watched hundreds or even thousands of men and women, it is not far fetched that you would be OK with watching your wife with another man because it's like watching a live video in front of your face. And eventually you're going to have to remove that sense of love and commitment to truly enjoy it because spicy content removes the humanity from most people and it simply gives you pleasure. That's what it really comes down to. If you want to be a cock old, here are some checkpoints to go through to make sure that this is something that turns you on and that's something that you want to do. So first of all, you enjoy um, having your wife looking at your wife, uh, engaging in sexual activities that do not involve you. Um, you don't mind being cheated on. You are usually submissive. You're, um, you don't mind also watching men. You don't like, you don't uh, mind touching men. Uh, you don't mind eating, um, their mess. Um, uh, also, you um, don't mind being humiliated, you don't mind or you get turned on from humiliation, you are usually small, 
um, your size is usually very small and um, your wife or your girl is very adventurous. Once again, what she's saying doesn't make any sense, but remember she's calculated this is all planting seeds, all planting seeds, okay? But first, let's get into what she even said. She doesn't give you any tips for how to explore these things in a healthy way. She starts off by saying, if your wife enjoys doing sexually things without you, which is vague because that could be a host of things. It could be far from watching another man sleep with your wife. Then she goes on to say, you like to be cheated on, which makes no sense because in order for you to work your way slowly into being a cuck, it would normally mean that you do not enjoy being cheated on. It is not common to form a relationship with someone and hope to be cheated on before you even consider being a cuck. Even before she started this, she mentioned that you would know the woman you are dating as a hot wife because she is adventurous and into different sizes and different men. Men are the ones who tend to bring up cucking. They're the ones who bring it up to their wives. So they didn't get with the woman who's already into that stuff. They normally bring up the idea and slowly work into it. So it's false that a man would go after a woman who he knew would do this. He tends to get in a relationship with somebody and then realizes he wants to be into this. She makes it seem as if the woman got into the relationship to cheat and humiliate her partner. I think what is missed here is that there is supposed to be more love and communication in this relationship than simply choosing whatever guy she wants when she wants to. There's supposed to be an open dialogue and talk about how the partner feels because even though he is allowing his wife to sleep with another man and maintain the relationship, he is still priority number one. She is explaining femdom, a relationship which means the man is completely submissive in every aspect. These are not the same thing. The hot wife still loves her husband and the humiliation is done kind of like a teasing. It is not done to make him feel unworthy of love, which she's going to talk about a lot. Next tip, she says that you're okay with touching a man and cleaning up his mess. That is not something that would help you become a cuck. You would already be a cuck at that point and that would not disqualify you from being a cuck because not all cucks are present during the intercourse. That is something that you see in the adult film industry, which is not reality. I think this is dangerous advice because this would make men put themselves in a position that could have them experience trauma as I had mentioned in my video. If you want to be a cuck, you don't let your wife sleep with another man and then clean up his mess afterwards. That's not how it goes. They're supposed to be slowly working your way into it. You start with a date or maybe a phone call over the phone and maybe you let her spend the night one night and this can be as slow as you need it to be. This could be over a month or over six months because a lot of people who are in the cuck community, they normally form a relationship with the bull as she talks about. It is not just, hey, you want to fuck me? And then it's all over. No. Guys, this is dangerous because she's going to make a lot of men go into dramatic experiences because some guys think that she knows what she's talking about when she simply doesn't because this is not her priority. Her priority is to make you into a man that will be submissive to her. And the things she's going to do to you is going to destroy you. Now, I'm not a fan of cuckolding, but I was willing to learn and help those who try to be healthy about the situation. Unlike what she does. Now we're about to start getting deep into the manipulation when she tries to play therapist. Remember, save your complex. First of all, we have to talk about where the submission comes from. Like, how did this happen? Where was the point where uh, you realized that you like being humiliated, that you like being dominated, that you like um, when a woman takes control? All right. So you have to go back in your past. I want. I want you to think about every single moment that you got controlled by women, okay? And it happens so much, guys. I'm telling you, like, I was thinking about this and I think in uh, nowadays age, it just happens so much on every single step. So there i don't even i don't even like w wonder anymore why there are so many submissive men because you guys have been meeting with this on every single corner okay so i want you to now take a look at your own life and go to every single female that was somehow controlling of you it could have been your mother it could have been your teacher it could have been your ex your girlfriend your friend, um, some random lady on the street, in the shop, I don't know. Go back to the moment where you got humiliated first or like 
kind of like disrespected by women because you know i was talking about this in my other video um called um, why, why you should what was it called yeah why your woman should be your biggest investment i talk about it in that video that men are really affected by women words okay um women words are really powerful to them um man's ear so um if you ever been humiliated by a woman um it has an effect on you she then goes in to talk about being traumatized and how you need to go back to that woman in order to fix the trauma now i'm thoroughly confused this is a person who actively encourages men to be submissive while having a problem with men being submissive while teaching how to be submissive but it's fine with you being submissive if you want to be submissive while also talking about being submissive can stem from being traumatized from being humiliated by a woman if that's the case then you would be knowingly encouraging people to be submissive because they have been traumatized she tries to play therapist while actively engaging in the trauma this is the savior complex or hero complex she creates a situation and then steps in as if she's the hero to save men from this. It's like the 600 pound life when Dr. Now calls somebody out for feeding unhealthy food to somebody who's bedridden. Like, I know this food is ruining your life and I know that you have a food addiction, but I also know that you like this food and it makes you happy. So I'm just going to keep feeding you anyway. She does that same thing. Like, I know you being submissive is because you're traumatized, but I know it excites you to be submissive. So I'm going to keep telling you to be submissive even though i know this is ruining your life what this is not healthy you know like it's not healthy like it's okay if it turns you on and it's your king that's everything um is all right with that if you are happy with this lifestyle it's cool but if you don't want to do this lifestyle anymore it's not healthy you have to realize that okay does that make any sense to you does that make any sense to you always try to stand above her and i'm not saying telling you to fight her or something or like st start shouting like no i'm not gonna do that but be like mentally just stand above her like for example she tells you that um um she doesn't like this and that and this is so funny about you or whatever you stand above her and um you try to make a joke of it like don't take her seriously okay that's the main point like whatever she says you can't take that seriously um just pretend like she's just teasing you in a way and you know your worth as a man that's the first one you have to know your worth as a man in the end she says to just take it as a joke because if you actually get humiliated that will trigger you by the traumatic event and that will turn you on now wait a minute me being triggered by a traumatic event and it turning me on is the problem then what is the point of me being in this submissive kink the only way i can allow myself to be into this kink is if i stay traumatized and not heal otherwise i would not take my mistress serious and she cannot dominate me once again this is manipulation because she's asking me to be submissive but heal the trauma that makes me submissive and then take it all as a joke if i do decide to be submissive she does all this just so she can play you up and make you feel good about yourself so she can turn you into a pay pig hey you may be asking yourself what is a pay pig well i'm glad you asked well let's get into the video in this video i want to talk about how i drained his pockets you see how happy she looks this seems like it's going to be a video that's about gold digging and it's going to be funny hilarious ha 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 no all right so um i did this first time i had experience with pay pigs and pocket drainings and all of that was um when i didn't know about anything about this fetish okay so i'm gonna tell you guys how that happened and now when i think back i'm just like oh my god like i really played out that fetish you know i didn't even know i was doing that all right now remember what she just said she said that she did not know this was a fetish at the time. That means the other person did not know it was a fetish. So this entire thing was not a fetish. Remember that. There was this guy and he owed me so much money for something. I mean, it wasn't like so much money, but like back then it was a lot of money for me. And he owed me the money, right? Um, and he didn't, uh, I was like always calling him like, when are you going to give him the money? Like I need it. And 
um you know like this is getting annoying and i'm gonna call police if you don't do that you know i was being like really crazy and he was like no yeah sure like next week i will pay you like i'm just waiting to get paid and whatnot and then then actually he was always like postponing it and whatnot and then one day I was actually walking down on the street and was with my dog, just regular day, and I saw him there. And at first I was like, yeah, hi, how are you? Um, like trying to be really innocent and whatnot. And then I was like, uh, you remember actually that you promised to return me the money, you know? And he was just like, um, yeah, sure. Like, can we wait next week? And I got so mad at that point. I was just like, you can't be serious. So, what I did at that point was kind of crazy, but like, <laughs> I started to kind of like beat him up. I like slap him, like, give me the fucking money. Like, I need it. Like, don't play with me, you know? And, um, I had really dirty shoes. Like, I was walking with my dog and I started kicking him with those shoes. Like, give me the fucking money, okay? And, I was like looking around and somebody doesn't see us because that could be a problem, you know, but like, you know, I had a reason to do that. Let's be honest. Um, you had the right to do that. You had the right to start beating up a man for money that you said was not really that significant. That was an OK thing to do. She is already starting to show her questionable actions. And you remember when I said that she laughs about watching men suffer? You noticed that she laughed. Right after she said she slapped him and then started kicking him with dirty shoes. This woman has problems, but it gets worse. So then he was like, yeah, sure. Like, uh, I will give it to you. Just wait. Like, don't beat me up. And, you know, like typical things he would say. And I was just like, no, you're going to give me the m fucking money now. So I took the wallet out of his pocket. He was like really holding it so strong. But I just like slapped him and I took the I took the wallet out, right? And he was trying to get it back from me. I was like, bro, like I want the money. Give me the money. And I had the dog leash in my hand. I just started beating him and thought like fucking stop and give me the wallet, right? So I took the wallet and I looked inside. And there was just there was just some money. There was not like the entire amount that he was he uh, owned me. Um, so I, I just took that, whatever there was, and I keep the wallet, I kept the wallet with me. And I was, I was still like having a dog leash, <laughs> dog leash and hitting him with that. And then we went to, then I was like, you're going to go home right now and you're going to, you're going to give the money to me, right? Like, I don't care if your brother is their sister, whatever, mom. You're gonna tell them what happened. I was that mad, guys. Like I was literally like, I will tell them and they're gonna give me the money. So I was like, yeah, cool, cool. Like, can we just chill, you know? And I was like, no, we cannot chill. So I literally like, I was beating him like this all the way <laughs> to his house, okay? He he lived like a couple um, miles away. I mean, maybe like a mile away or something like that. And the whole time I was just like looking at him, I was still keeping his wallet in my hand like that shit is mine. So we're still beating the man for money that he said he's going to pay you back next week. And you're still laughing about it as if it's a joke. And you're already ready to take the money he already has and then take more of his money. Because this is a fetish, guys. That's what it's, she wants to hide behind. But it's not normal behavior. She's insane. Okay. So then, <laughs> then we went inside and nobody was at home. And at first I was just like, I wish somebody was there so I could tell them on him. And like, I could tell them like what he has done and whatnot and that I, that I need the money. But then I just like, I went inside with him. I made him like, I just went inside without even asking. Okay. <laughs> so we went inside and... I was just like, where is all your uh, other money? And he was at first like, 
no like i don't have it like uh everything that i have in, in the wallet is like all that i have right but then i was just like i started to beat him so much i kick him with my dirty shoes <laughs> that he he just went somewhere in the kitchen there was some sort of like um closet or something like that like the cupboard and he just took something out he just took some money out he just gave it to me okay so i finally had all the money that i needed right like that he was owning owing me but i was just like i felt really still bad about it because like i own more you know like he didn't pay that to me for such a long time right so i i didn't force him to pay me a lot more <laughs> I just took it actually and I was just like I'm gonna take this and um you're gonna shut the fuck up if you want me to leave you alone okay so she went into his house without any permission he gave you the rest of the money after you were beating him and then after you finally get all the money you say I'm gonna take even more from you does that sound like normal behavior to you guys at all and she's laughing for this entire duration so then he gave it to me and I still had the wallet in my hand. So I just took his bank card and I was like, what is the pin code to that, right? Like, you know, I, I want access to, that, to his bank card, right? Like I want access to his bank account, obviously. Like if he's being such an ass, that's just fair, right? Like he's like, no, like I can't, I can't really do that. I can't really do that. But I just like stood on him literally like I beat him down on, <laughs> down on the floor and I stood, stood on him with my dirty shoes. My dog was, I actually, I think I, I even like lost my dog somewhere. Like he went somewhere. Then eventually I found him when I get out of, got out of his house. But I was there like stepping all over him with those dirty dog shoes. And he was just like, okay, okay, I'll give it to you. So he gave me the pin code. And then I tried it immediately if it's working or not. And it didn't work. And I was just like, you're such a fucking liar, you know? And I started spitting even more. So and then he sounded like you had to verify it in the app or something. So I, so I was watching like he's verifying that, you know? And um, then I finally like, got access to that card. Like I, I saved the card on my phone. And... Um, <laughs> I watched him like verified and everything and then um I just tried to purchase something and it went through and I was just like yes amazing like exactly like now all your money is mine just because of this one stupid mistake that you did in the past of not returning me my money when you owned me um so yeah this is how I drained him so this video was called how I drained him, pay pig. This video should be called How I Beat Up a Man, Broke into His House, and Robbed Him. That's what the video should be called. She said that she was playing out a fetish when neither of the people knew it was a fetish. And then she's laughing the whole time. I'm telling you, she hides behind being a dominatrix to excuse her awful behavior. Oh, Trey, should we give her a break? She was 19 at the time. Uh, no, we're not giving her a break because obviously she does this again. Hi guys, my name is Bella. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about my absolutely favorite topic, which is pay big rinsing. And before we get started, um, what actually is rinsing? What is the difference between draining a pay pick and rinsing a pay pick. I think you can guess it, but for those who cannot, let's explain that. Draining means like little by little, like you take the money from the pay pick um, in part and um, humiliate him in between and just take it gradually. Rinsing is just taking it all and uh what is more exciting than that right yes guys what is more exciting than taking everything somebody has and ruining them that is so exciting and the way she goes about it i know you guys are thinking well if he's dumb if he wanted to spend the money <laughs> you give this creator way too much lead way anyways 
I want to talk about my experience about rinsing a pay pig that I just went through um, recently and the money has just came into my bank account right now. I will show you right here. Here are my bank statements and whatever. This top one, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't focus, but the top one is the money that just arrived in my bank account from this pay pig. Okay, and how this all happened. Okay, let's talk about that. Let me step in right quick. I have to say a part that I just cut out. She ends up showing this man's name and I cut that part out. But all she says is this was the biggest beta she knows. And that's what leads to this part right here. Um, I just couldn't, you know, I just didn't want to let him go because he needed to be rinsed. Like, he needed that desperately because, um, why does he need all that money for? Like, what, what would he need that for, right? So, we agreed on a rinse and he was like, oh, but mistress, can I do that in April? Like, we agreed to do that first week of April, right? And I was like, cool, sure, whatever. And he was like, oh, okay, he's gonna send me all my all his financial documents, like how much he's making, how much he's spending on rent and whatever, like how much he needs. And um, then he sent me like a couple of options to pick from, right? Like if I want to, um, how much I want to rinse of his extra money that he doesn't need to spend on necessity necessities that month um and if i want to leave him with some spare well of course i did not want to leave him with any spare like i don't know who he thinks he is but he doesn't get to like just live freely and spend that money freely no like that's just unacceptable for me and I was even open to the thing that I would just also take his money that he has to spend for rent. But then I was like, oh, I I'm not that much of a bitch yet. Okay, so I will let him have a place to stay. You notice that she said, I'm not that much of a bitch yet. Because she's going to do something so foul later on that it's going to make your stomach turn. Because she finds joy in taking somebody's money. She takes joy in doing these things. She just said that she didn't even want him to have anything to spare. And she picked him out. Remember that. She said that he was a beta. And she went after him and then suggested that they do a rinse. It wasn't his idea. It was hers. She doesn't understand how this femdom and all that stuff works. Because she's just a terrible person. But no. He did not go to her with this idea. She went to him and because she knew he was vulnerable, she knew she could do it. She is awful. Not sure for how long, but yeah. So I just decided to take everything that was left after all of um, all of his necessities, which was at the end of the day, $500. In one day, he just sent it all to me. But okay, back to the story. We agreed to do that at the um, beginning of April. But then he texted me like, Bella, can you make um, a video about a rinse? And I'm like, I am not making a video unless the rinse happened. So then he would send it to me immediately, as he should. Because he's so addicted to being rinsed and being a slave and just doing exactly what I say that he couldn't help himself just send it the same day so that he can watch this video about how I talk about him having absolutely nothing, right? But anyways, um, right before he sent me the money, he made sure that he had enough uh, fridge supplies and I think he was still left with like $30 um I did want to ask him for that but um then I was just like you know something can happen you know and I don't want him to die 
because I hope that $30 is gonna be enough to like recover him from whatever he's gonna come <laughs> along during this month when he's left with no money because I rinsed him of everything. So I was just like, yeah, those keep those $30 to survive in case something happens to you. I might not be that nice next time, but this time I am just being a sweetheart, right? Um, anyways, uh, so... What else did I want to say? And here comes more manipulation. And this is how she brings a lot of these men that she loves to rinse or drain. She does things like this in order to make you think, hey, this is perfectly normal. You should do this. You should love doing this because it will help you. <laughs> I'm laughing because she says the same thing later. And it's the most manipulative way to go about it. Let me read it. Now my rinsing is over, I feel an overwhelming sense of calmness, and I am at peace now. I was concerned leading up to the rinse, my card would be rejected, as I did not want to disappoint you. I want to thank you for your emails leading up to my rinse. They were encouraging and made, me rinsing, made my rinsing humane and therapeutic. Thank you, Goddess Bella. So let's think about it, guys. This rinse made him feel calm and it was like a therapy for him. Think about it, guys. Like, you know, there's some betas or pay pigs out there. They're just like, they're into that, but they don't really want to, you know, they don't feel that good about sending that much amount of money. So you see, she is perfectly fine with taking anybody's money. By the way, looking at this email, I don't know how that email was written. But I've never seen an email in that format, so I'm not sure if that's actually real, but we're just going to say it is. But the whole point is, regardless if it's real or not, this is manipulation. She is trying to get other men to do the exact same thing. She is literally asking men to give her everything they have. It almost sounds like a scam. OK, does that not sound like a scam? Hey, listen. If you want to give me all your money, it's really going to help you. It's going to make you a much better person. So just trust me on this. Give me all your money and your life is going to be grand. It's sickening. And I'm telling you, this person right here doesn't stop. Now, this next video is the same concept with the pay pig. But this is absolutely deranged the way she does this pay pig. It doesn't even make sense why she did it. Well, I know why she did it because she's insane, but I just can't always wrap my head around how somebody can be this terrible and horrible. So just prepare yourself. Hi guys, my name is Bella. And in this video, I'm going to tell you a story time about how I drained one pathetic Australian pay pig um, of over $5,000 plus this beautiful YSL bag which is worth maybe like two thousand dollars that um i also made him buy for me um anyways now we heard her earlier define what is draining and what is rinsing okay now she says that draining is doing it little by little and rinsing is taking it all at one time is do you <laughs> do you honestly think that's what happens in this video you think she just drained somebody of their bank account? Well, let's watch. Without further ado, let's get started about how this all went down. So he craved into my inbox the other day and I just looked at it, right? I just looked at his profile picture, like who the fuck is that, right? And he was so fat and ugly. Um and his face was all oily and his hair was just like you like you know he had this kind of hair in the front like absolutely disgusting and he started spamming me and being super annoying so he was like oh god is like I'm, I'm feeling so weak like you know i'm sure he hasn't seen a, a woman for um probably three months of being so pathetic like i saw him in that message in that that one day and then he was like oh goddess can i please serve you i'm gonna do anything for you please just like give me some attention so he was just super desperate right so i sent him my link to pay me and then he sent me like 200 dollars to start right 
um i mean to start he thought that was all right but of course it was not all what a beautiful soul she is man she didn't want to talk to this guy because he was ugly and he has to pay to talk to her you're gonna hear how she talks about betas later if she believes that betas are the better species but look how she treats people that she doesn't respect so keep this story in mind when we go along but right now she is getting this man who she considers ugly and making him pay to talk to her so and i told him like who does he think he is right like was that a joke like was that 200 dollars a joke and i made him send me more if he wanted to talk with me so then he immediately sent me like 500 more and he was begging me to show him like selfies of me and my feed and stuff like that he was like he's gonna he's gonna do anything just so he can see that right and i was like no i'm not going to show you shit like look at yourself how ugly you are he was literally super fat and ugly um i don't know like if 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 some of y'all look like that and you approach me um you have to pay up for your ugliness like i'm not talking to like fucks like you all right so um then i was like i'm not gonna show him anything right and he started crying so bad so i was just making fun of him telling him to <laughs> telling him to stroke with his tears <laughs> as a lube and that just like really offended him he was really broken he was like crying so hard in my inbox and super annoying um so then i told him like okay send me 500 more then i will send you some selfies of me so he sent me 500 more and then i didn't send him the selfie so earlier i alluded to how she sounds like a scammer right and she clearly is she's a fraud hiding behind being a femdom to excuse her horrible and disgusting actions but what she's about to go on to do and i've been trying to avoid saying this word up to this point but it is absolutely evil what she's about to do to this young man because remember she said that these men who do these kind of things are traumatized right she wanted to play therapist say they're having mental problems there's something wrong with them but no she's gonna take full advantage of this because she knows her videos get to certain men and when she gets that chance and she gets into your mind she's going to take you for all that you have I didn't sell him anything, of course, because, like, um, he was absolutely pathetic and desperate. So, yeah, but he was begging me so much and he was feeling, like, really um, bad. And, you know, I like scamming people like this because they don't deserve, like, to see me. So then I told him, like, oh, 1,000 or more and I'll show you, I will show him. I'll show him my feet. <laughs> so then he sent that to me and then I showed him my feet eventually, but the feet were like super like muddy and dirty because you know that's that's what a pathetic fuck like him deserves anyways. Just dirty, ugly feet. Like he's not gonna see my feet like super clean and you know polished. So you went out of your way to go step in the mud to make your feet dirty because he didn't deserve clean feet. You could have just took a regular picture and not cleaned your feet, but you decided to go outside, step in dirt and mud, and then take the picture? That sounds like you put even more effort into the photo. You said he didn't deserve to see your feet clean, but you literally went outside and found mud and stepped in it. That right there told me that you put even more effort into it. But you think you're being smart. You think you're being bright because you're this goddess. And like I said, guys, she is playing this stuff in her head. Remember that video from earlier, the first video I showed you, where she said you can't be realistic? That's what she is. This is all in her head. She is not well. And when I say not well, I mean, dude, she has made herself into such a goddess in her head that she has turned herself into this evil individual. Of course not. Um, so then he would like cry on and he would be just like really sad and then he would send me pictures of him and his little shrimp and I was looking at that and 
that was literally so small like i couldn't see he was fat right so like i could barely see it right like <laughs> that was <laughs> that was so funny i could barely see that and i made him send me a picture of his face too and um like his face and all naked right and he was working as like an executive in a in a corporation and uh I went to his profile and actually he had the company's name on the profile. The company that he was working for, he had that on, on his profile, right? So I googled that company and... <laughs> now she's laughing. What do you think she's going to say that she did after she found out the name of his company? Huh? Why do you think that she gets so giddy about a man who's obviously down on his luck? He's sending pictures of himself to her because... I want to be honest about this. I think she was manipulating him into this. Some people may say this is a real story, a fake story. To me, I think it's a real story because I've watched a ton of her videos and she tends to do this kind of stuff. And I do think there are men out there who do this for her because I have looked in her comment section. There are men who are willing to give her money and let them embarrass them. So what do y'all think she did with that information? I googled the company and... I saw like his um like contact to the company like emails and stuff like that and he was he was quite a like a big person in the company right so I decided to email that company with his pictures <laughs> the ones that he sent me right and before I send that of course I would just send it to him I was just sending him a screenshot of that um I was sending him a screenshot of the email how it was all drafted and he went absolutely nuts because he did not expect me to do this to him right and then i was just like okay well if you don't want me to send that you're going to buy me this beautiful bag and here it is <laughs> i got it of course i got it of course i got it like um i'm gonna do any i'm gonna get anything you know he had no other choice just to send it to me because I was almost about to ruin his career with that and he was literally so helpless afterwards and I, of course like it wasn't the end for me so I would just search up some more like employees of the company they were all like on the on the company's profile and I would find those people <laughs> I would find their emails and I would just threaten him again that I'm going to send those pictures to these people so he would just cry so much like no like God is like you know don't do this like this is not fair and stuff like that but of course I didn't care I just wanted to take the most uh, make the most out of it so I made him send me like um two thousand dollars more and <laughs> that was so funny seeing him so desperate and so like on tears and miserable because i was just literally like wrecking his life over like one click and his entire life would be ruined so um yeah and then i was like okay cool you're lucky i'm not going to send it and then I was like, I want to, uh, I want to take some more money off him, and he was like, No, goddess, I don't have any more. Like, I have to have, I have to save some for my family, for my wife, right? Like, he had a family, and I was like, Okay, well, you're of no use to me anymore. So I just blocked him. <laughs> I just blocked him afterwards after he sent me all these thousands of uh, dollars and my bag. Um, and then he was just like sent again and with like the payment message he was like oh goddess unblock me like i am so pathetic i'm so sad like i need your attention i need um i don't want to like you know i don't want to lose you and stuff like that so then i unblocked him but for that one unblock i charged him like i don't remember how much it was like a couple hundred dollars i think so she goes on to say that she's going to blackmail him pretty much for the rest of his days because she still has the pictures and she's ready to send them at any moment. Now, this is against the law because he sent those pictures privately and she was going to ruin his career. While she continues to seek out employees and continue to blackmail him, this is a sick person. Who would ruin someone's life instead of blocking them in the first place? This is not a femdom, people. This is a sick person person 
I am struggling to find anything nice to say about this person. This is just a few of her videos in her catalog where she admits to doing so many things to hurt people. She assumes everybody wants to be part of her kink or fetish. This man was sending her money because he was being blackmailed and she continues to threaten him to the point where his family has to suffer because his loneliness led to one of the sickest people on the planet. Now she says that she is for the men. She'll go on later here to say she really cares about these men who are submissive. But from the very get go, this man reached out to her. The first thing she said was he was ugly, disgusting, didn't deserve her time and shouldn't have even been in her presence to the point where he sent her some pictures privately and she was going to blackmail him for that. She had a plan all along. That's why she didn't block him, not because she was disgusted by him, not because she thought it was ugly, all that. She knew right from the jump that as soon as this man texted her, that she knew she could rinse him of everything that he has. Now, this video that you're seeing running in the background right now, this video is called about how serving women is an alpha move. Another manipulation tactic. And this video is after the one you just previously saw. She knows what she's doing, guys. In this video, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic that has been a really big aha moment for me. And I was like, I need to come on here on my channel and made a separate video about it because it's really just like blowing my mind sometimes, okay? And the thing is that serving women, worshiping women, and being kind of like submissive to women is actually dna ingrained what i mean by that is that evol evolutionary speaking men have always been serving women okay and there is some people they come in my comments and they're like oh bella i have a girlfriend i have a wife but i i want to serve a goddess like you know I, it's not enough for me i feel like i want to serve yes every man actually wants to serve a woman because it is so evolutionary um, based that you still, until this moment, carry that same DNA as these people in the past. And what I mean by these people in the past is that when you look at the history, it's always been the men who went out hunting for the women, okay? They um, sacrificed their lives. They went out into danger and stuff like that just to serve their women. Yes. Men went out to hunt so they could also eat. And that's called protection and providing. But she's going to start using these words interchangeably. When she says serve, she really means submit to women. She sounds like a woman who hates men in every category. She makes up these stories in her head about how men have always served women. However, is that what we hear about the world? That women have oppressed men for thousands of years? No, the agenda she pushes does nothing to serve anyone. Literally, once again, she stated that men should not be submissive because it hurts society. Well, how can that be? If men are doing what they've always done for thousands of years, why would she state that less men should be submissive? We all know why. Or for example, when a father has two kids, one of them is a girl and the other one is a boy, it doesn't matter which one is older and which one is younger, he's always going to be more protective of the girl, okay? The boy is going to be kind of like, of course, he's going to be a protective of him too because it's his kid, but not as much as of the girl, right? Which again shows that the female life is a lot more precious and men have been actually conditioned to serve women since the very early ages of times. She feels so smart when she's actually very confused. Her entire being is so wrapped in this world of femdom that she can't see outside the box Men do protect women like a man protects his daughter. Protection and being submissive to women are not the same thing. She mentioned that betas are actually more masculine. And here is the manipulation that's coming into the fold. You're going to see this. When some of you guys tell me, oh, I am a beta. I love serving women. Doesn't mean that I'm not masculine enough. Doesn't mean that I'm weak. Actually, I, I was thinking about that and it might mean no. It might actually mean that you are more masculine and more strong than all these other men who could not, who cannot do anything for a woman, right? Like, think about it. 
yes th there can be like a strong alpha with muscles and everything and nice package whatever but if he cannot sacrifice his life for a woman if he cannot um serve a woman is he really a man okay because it's really it's really a fulfillment for a man to serve a woman and this is why i believe that femdom should be number one kink in the world now some of that i cut out because pretty much she starts talking in circles she goes on to say that an alpha male should be with a woman but take out all the kinky stuff like the humiliation and loss of respect and that's how relationships should look so it should look like a beta male serving their woman but he's just an alpha it makes no sense and you see that she wants fendom to be the number one kink in the world that is a clear bias and she is trying to hide behind a man wanting to provide and protect as the same thing as submission to femdom. And yes, I know that she is saying serving and not submission, but she uses those words interchangeably. I believe that the reason she wants femdom to be the number one kink is so that she can grow her brand even more. She wants one of the biggest channel and clientele out there. She is on a warpath to gain as much power as she can. And I normally would say this tongue in cheek, but I don't think this is a joke. She is on a mission to gain more and more over men. She is in love with the feeling of being able to do what she wants, say what she wants, and then the men just follow. We saw that in the very first video. We are continuing to see it now. And I want to talk a bit about my experience, which is that I have been in the industry as a vanilla content creator. If you know me for a longer for a longer time, you know that about me. And um, I've noticed that one really interesting thing. And that is that when I got into femdom, I started making more money okay and i was thinking about it like why is it like that and and also not just about the money it's i started to uh i felt that other people are respecting me more you know I, i'm i'm gaining like um like i don't have to do anything that doesn't make me feel good or doesn't make me feel like um doesn't make me feel respected and i can just do femdom okay and i started to make more money why why is this? Because I am playing with exactly this um, innate male nature of their need to serve a woman, right? Because I don't think a man wants to serve a woman by serve, I mean paying in this case, who is degrading herself. So y'all heard it. Why does she continue to do this kind of content? Because she started to make more money which is the very first thing I mentioned when we started this thing, is that the money and the subscribers have gone to her head. But I'm sure all of y'all saw that coming because I kind of alluded to it already. The money changed everything and the men will come out to pay. I will admit, she figured out one thing. This content will make you money because you're not playing it safe. We see this in the streaming content creator realm all the time. Certain creators who put themselves on a pedestal will make more money off lonely men. I think that's why she pushes men to be submissive and doing ball busting and castration. We haven't got there yet, we will. But what does it lead to for her? What does she get if she always pushes men to take pain, to castrate themselves, to be submissive, to pay her money? It always leads to that rinse and repeat. It gets men to pay her money because she's already manipulated them into thinking, hey, being a beta is a great thing. That actually makes you an alpha. So, yeah, you should pay me because it's, your, it's within your innate ability. Shout out to Nestle Niles. I'm just saying that is the whole point. It is all about money and it is all about power. Now, I had just mentioned castration. Let's get into it. First of all, I want to talk about why you know why people get castrated or like animals most of the time at these days and uh, why it is such a big king i would say with um all male species <laughs> or i don't know like it's kind of in the in the man on in the male species blood because me personally 
I do horse riding and I work uh, with a lot of animals and on a farm and whatnot. And a lot of the male um, species, they get castrated. Okay, so let's talk about why first, okay? Um, when the male is not castrated, he is just not thinking with his brain, okay? He's thinking through his cock, right? Like he has all these, um, you know, hormones flying, testosterone, you know, it's just like a whole a lot of mess. And I see it especially with horses. Um, riding a horse that is not castrated is like extremely difficult because the horse starts jumping and like these hormones just do whatever they want with the with the male horse, right? And um, it's the same with like, it doesn't have to, but oftentimes it's the same with other uh, animals like bulls and dogs and cats, whatever. Like all these men, like when they have this male hormone in them, it makes like, it makes them very driven, makes them very like uh, thinking from the head down there, you know, like they, they are not in the right senses. And um, when you castrate a horse, I have the most experience with horses, right? Um, all of a sudden the horse completely changes. Like literally, like before the horse could not contain himself, was making a lot of noise, um, you could not ride it, he would bite, he would just kick, whatever, it would be just crazy. As soon as he gets castrated, it's a whole other horse, right? He starts being nice and loving and like a good servant, you know, he's a good serving horse and... And you hear that? She wants to compare men to horses. And I want you to notice how she talks about it. She talks about a male horse getting castrated and it becoming nice. And what is her special word that she loves to say? Servant. It becomes a great servant. Even though it is shown that men who are castrated become more depressed and they want to take their lives. When the testosterone is lowered in men's body, it has negative effects. It is not something you should inspire to do. They don't become calmer and happier like a horse and that's the same thing for human males right so imagine you are right now having all this testosterone hormones flowing through your body you are like getting um aroused at um inappropriate times inappropriate times and uh, you know you're not thinking with your brain you just can't do anything because you're getting rolled by these hormones and it's like very normal right like i'm not doing this to bash you like every male species on this planet is pretty much ruled by that and i'm not talking like females are not females are too they, they have like their times when they're also ruled by this kind of um hormones um that are more nature um, native to the females but with men it's like a lot more you know like it's it's on uh, higher levels and like higher frequencies also like with women it's kind of like fluctuating whatever and the men is you know so um yeah so if you have noticed this about yourself and it's bothering you and I, i'm sure it's bothering bothering a lot of men castration is the way to go okay and um you can use this scissor to do that. I mean, there's a lot of like, how would I say it? Like ways to cast get castrated. You can have, you can have it done professionally. You can like have your mistress do it. Um, I recommend you do it professionally because there can be like some um, complications happening, you know. But you know, a lot of um, men just get really aroused by the idea that a mistress is going to do it during a ritual, right? Like you can have a lot of rituals uh, when it's done and I'm sure it's fun, but make sure to stay safe and like not get infected because it can get like really nasty. I can imagine it can get really nasty. How about we just not recommend it at all? I think that would be a beautiful thing. But do y'all think she's doing this because some men can't control themselves some men want to go and i don't know just look at the adult industry all day so they deserve to be castrated do you think she really cares about any of that do you think there's she cares about sometimes how men can get overly aggressive and all that no she don't care about none of that she has one purpose and one purpose only for telling you to get castrated and she has a whole interview talking to a man who did get castrated 
and she says how great it is and says that it helped them in life and she continues with this manipulation and when you go to the comment section of that video you will see people saying yeah i got castrated because i didn't feel like a male yes i got castrated because i was a beta yes i got castrated because it made me feel weak she does all of this to continue to manipulate people and she can't say anything to help you if you were to go to her and tell her hey i got cash rated and she'll be like good job for you great but you know what she really thinks about you she's completely disgusted because betas disgust her as we'll see here in a bit okay so this is what's gonna happen this is how you're gonna lose your manhood forever okay but don't look at it in a bad way like oh my god i'm not a man anymore as i was explaining with the horse example um you're still gonna be there right like you just won't be able to reproduce you just won't be you just won't be um having all these unnecessary hormones going through your body that like they don't belong to you in my opinion if you're not a real man right like why would you have these hormones flowing through your body that's just like a normal thing to do just to get rid of them and be a good servant to, to the society to your mistress and you can focus on other things right um so i hope this video um inspired you <laughs> uh as i said make sure to think about this um for a long enough time if you want to do this or not because it's a lifelong decision but as i was mentioning with the horses it, it is gonna make a big difference in the way you show up to the world so um and a lot of positive one, I would say, you know, especially if you have like a lot of um, addiction, like porn addiction and uh, this kind of things. Um, yeah. <laughs> this creator is spreading the most dangerous rhetoric I've ever heard on YouTube. And she is protecting herself by putting it under the guise of a kink. She states that you will be a good servant to society and to your mistress. This is the same person who said that being submissive is harmful to society just a few months before she published this video. Keep this in mind. This is coming from a woman who has already beaten, broken into a house, robbed the guy, rinsed the guy's bank account because she knew he had money, and then stated that she loves being a dominatrix because she feels powerful and can do whatever she wants. She tells you to think about it because this is a lifelong decision, but she makes an entire video telling you only the positives about how it can make your life better. And then she compares you to a male horse. She's not trying to get you to think about it. She's telling you to do it because it's a kink. <laughs> and she puts it all under a kink, but really she just wants to see men suffer. You will always notice how she laughs so much when she talks about this stuff. She doesn't get serious. She doesn't go, Hey guys, really take a look at this. No, she's always, you should get castrated. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Now we're about to find out one of her favorite things to do to men. And in this video, we are going to talk some more about ball busting. I'm so excited. Anyways, um, so why do women actually like to bust some balls? Okay, we are going to talk about that today. And actually, it's very natural. I think that every woman just wants to do that. You notice the reoccurring pattern with her. In a lot of her videos, she says, I think a lot of women like to do this, or all women want to do this, or most men like to do this, or most men are like male horses. It's just this kind of rhetoric that continues to go on. The average person does not live life in this kink niche. That's why it's a kink. She is trying to normalize these things because her channel is growing and she wants to continue to grow her clientele by seeking out these people. She always tries to plant this seed because she wants men to suffer in order to pleasure women. So what does she do here? She says that all women like to do this, guys, so you should pretty much be into it. Whenever I see some balls, it just this is what I think of, okay? Like, I just want to... <laughs> I just wanted to like pop it, you know, I just want to squeeze it, right? And too bad I don't have that ball right now, even though I'm like, I'm gonna order it because I want to practice my ball busting skills on it a little bit. <laughs> but I don't have that, I don't have a ball here right now with me. But I wanted to explain to you guys how that works, okay? Like how, how we process that in our minds, all right? So I'm going to use my 
little teddy bear <laughs> as a prop because I don't have the ball, right? So you know how you have the balls, right? Like these are the balls. The head is the balls, right? So you know how you like squeeze it like here at the neck and the balls just come out. Like you can literally see them, you know, like you can just see that. And then you're just like, <laughs> it, just, it's like it just makes me so excited, you know, because like they should pop, you know, like why are they? <laughs> Does that sound normal to you? When you see a man's testicles, you want to squeeze them, knowing full well there is a man who is in pain behind that. This sounds like a child with no control. I do. And I think every girl is, is like me, okay? Because it just like, you know, or like when you have it like this, you just want to put something sharp to see if they're actually gonna pop, you know, like with the bubble wrap, like you just wanna pop them, or like with pimples, like, you know, it's just like a pimple, right? Like, that ball is like the pimple, right? So when you squeeze it like this and you come it out, like you just want it to come, come out completely, do you understand? This is not normal behavior. I understand that some men are into this and some women, but would you not be absolutely terrified around this girl? Because she said that when she thinks about grabbing testicles, she wants to grab something sharp and see stuff come out. The issue with this creator has shown that she is not doing this for a kink. She loves to see men suffer and she does not care what she has to do in order to fulfill these fantasies. There are people who are into ball busting, but they try to do it with care. This person seems like they absolutely get joy out of it. And these are the type of people you do not want to get around when you do try these kind of kinks because there is supposed to be some kind of communication and they're not supposed to just cause you pain. She says she wants to squeeze them and punch them as hard as she can, as you saw with the bear. And she wants to grab something sharp to see it pop. She's not looking at your testicles as a part of you as a human being. She is looking at something that she can do to harm you. So we have to ask the question, and I'm gonna let her answer this. Do you like to degrade men? No, I am not trying to de degenerate men. All I'm doing is providing a safe space for men that are not alpha, that are not dominant, to feel safe and to feel accepted, all right? That's it. That's all I'm doing. And that's the purpose of this channel. That's why I do Femdom. And uh, I saw a great need. And a lot of people have told me that. That I'm one of the very few channels on here that talk about men being betas. Men being like weaker than like conventional men should be. Right? And we also have to understand that not all men in the world can be strong and can be masculine. I know with all this movement like um Andrew Tay, whatever. Everybody's trying to make every single man like super masculine, right? And it's a good the idea is good. I support that we do need strong man. However, there all always has to be an opposite. Do you know what I mean? Like a day cannot exist without night. Because if the night wouldn't exist, there would be just date all the time. The day uh, as a word would lose its sense. Do you understand? Like if they will be just light all the time, then that's all there is. So here's the problem, ma'am. You don't have an in between. You either say you're an alpha or you're a beta who needs to have ball busting, cash racing. You need to be into Fendom. You need to have a woman take all your money. You need to love all this stuff. So you don't give an out for other types of men. It's either you're an alpha and strong or you're a beta and you deserve to be cash rated pretty much. You don't give any in between. And that's the problem with your content is you make it seem like there's only two types of men and the kind of men you're going to go after are the betas because you believe that is where most men fall and it's just disgusting to hear you continue to manipulate these people by making these videos and saying i'm trying to create a safe place when you literally have a video talking about how you should be cash rated tell me how that makes any sense let me calm down for these type of people for these men to all the time be bombarded by this you know masculinity things and 
well they don't feel like it well they just feel you know they just feel forced to be that way even if they don't feel they are that way and by all means i support that if you think that you um can be masculine if you think that you are going through something you know and you still have the capability to do that i by all means i um support you to become more confident and like love yourself more and become more masculine but at all times there's always going to be a group that is perfectly healthy they love themselves but they are submissive they are like you know they don't want to do this weird whatever andrew tate things so i do not degenerate anybody i don't go to these um people telling them they should come and serve me even though they should but i don't go there and turn them into something that i know they don't want to be right i go to them those people who um already are in this community and who wants to be who wants to explore more about themselves who want to be accepted in um in um this online community and this is where i come into play right wrong because wait a minute you encourage men to become betas and tell them that castration can help you but would not say that you want them to serve you you told stories of three men whose bank accounts you drained and even one guy that you keep on a leash because you have pictures of him so you continue to blackmail him. You have around a hundred videos that in one way or another encourage submission, ball busting, castration, cucking, being a beta, pay pigs, and being a sissy. Your goal is to make femdom the number one kink and how do you do that? Well, you would have to produce more content to help push more people into these lifestyles. There's no way you can say, hey, I want femdom to be the number one kink and I want more men to serve as betas while also not encouraging men to be betas. You are absolutely contributing to that problem. I'm not turning anybody into anything. I don't support that. But I will still um engage with you guys and talk about this kind of things that we talk about on my channel i will still kind of enforce not like enforce but um make it sound like it is normal because it is and nobody's talking about it right nobody's talking about fandom the way i am talking about it on youtube and make you guys feel that it is okay to explore and not feel ashamed about it because the amount of people i'm getting on my special website and dming me whatever telling me that they are this and that but they never came out they're creating fake pages i get so many dms from fake pages telling me like oh bella i am a sissy i am this i don't know how to come out whatever like they are literally so ashamed that they are ashamed to come with their real page to my dm right and yeah there's a lot of shame in this community and that's what i'm trying to kind of take away and make it normal that people are allowed to have certain fantasies they're allowed to want to be done by a dominatrix what's wrong with that did you catch that she says that no one is talking about femdom like she is why is that because most femdoms understand the dynamic that comes with this king and they understand communication, time, effort, and what it takes to be a good femdom. And your goal is to simply control men and make their lives miserable. And you also said that a lot of people come to you saying, hey, I can't come out. I want to be a sissy. I want to be this. The reason they come to you is because they know you are going to validate it. You do not care. You are going to be the one to be like, yes, you are a beta. You are disgusting. You are this because you said earlier when that man who came to you who was fat and ugly you didn't do anything to encourage him you said that you have to pay to talk to me and when he tried to get out you continued to blackmail that man femdoms talk about how hard it is to stay in the kink because of the nurturing that comes with it as well they try to protect the community from people like you because you are a fake femdom you are a person who truly finds pleasure in the suffering of others so yes some men may come to you and say hey i need some help with this because i'm suffering as a beta because they know for a fact that you 
were absolutely validated without even looking into it or encouraging them to get therapy or do anything else, you will immediately say, hey, that's perfectly fine. You are a disgusting pig. Now pay me. And I'm not saying that everybody who wants to be into submission and all that stuff absolutely needs mental health. But that is what she said. She says that these people who want to be submissive have trauma because at some point in their life, women humiliated them and it broke them and messed them up. She said that. That's the only reason I'm bringing that up. So let's find out why you are a beta and why you're stuck there. Alpha men can control their urges while beta men can't. All right, so let's dig deeper into this, what I mean. So betas are usually pretty much controlled by their urges, right? So they are um, they are ready to do anything just to satisfy their urge, right? Um, so then they have to be controlled and put back into place. For example, with chastity, we're having a mistress who is going to uh, keep an eye on them. They just simply cannot control themselves, right? Because with men, there's just it's very simple. Like everything is controlled by the thing down there, right? So like it's not really about the gym, right? So um, if that thing is really controlling your life and you did not reach that point where you can control it that's the point where you become an alpha i would say because you can control you can control that energy and that transforms everything right because you can use this energy into different areas of your life right and women can feel it like women can feel on you how good you can control yourself and um, it happened to me also multiple times right like i can see on a man how good he is at controlling himself and his urges and the more he's able to do that the more i'm attracted to him the more i'm like whoa like who is this guy why is it that way because he can use this extremely potent energy to other things he can use it to make money he can use it to uh, work out he can use it to you know become stronger whatever whatever right but if i'm a, um, i'm hanging out with a beta whose entire life is just revolving around that thing down there and his satisfaction i'm not attracted to that it's just like disgusting to me right you heard it there yourself folks what have i been telling you this entire time how does she feel about beta males she says she is disgusted by them I know I have beaten this into the ground with her stance on betas, but I want the men who come across her to know this. This is not an act. She really is disgusted by you and she has no desire to be with you. I see many men fall into this trap because they get confused by someone who calls them a pig, disgusting and ugly and even tells them they should be submissive and they think that it's a good thing. Think about when she mentions that men have paid her. Or that she thinks men should castrate themselves. Or that being a beta is the ultimate man. It is only for her gain. But she will fool you into believing that this is the best thing for you. That is horrible to me. You are already down on yourself. And you come across somebody like this. Who said it's a safe place for you to be yourself. But will publicly say she is disgusted by you. Does that sound like somebody who is trying to help you? No, they don't care about you. It will drain every bit of happiness from your life out of you. Also remember, she will not even consider talking to you unless you pay her everything you have. This is why I'm warning men against this content because you will be manipulated into this and I could easily say you know better, but the biggest truth that's ever told is that sex sells. It happens at such a young age for men. By the time they have the power to understand what happened to them, they run into these type of women, someone who will destroy you and someone who will make you even consider cash rating yourself physically mentally and emotionally and before you know it your life is forever changed and some men can't come back from that and they take the only other option out i don't want that this woman is money hungry and on a power trip with the growth of her channel and she's only gotten worse since her platform has grown and we have to continue to talk against this because this woman is out to destroy lives so and it just like duh right like it's nothing new right like of course there's nothing cool about a beta guy who cannot control his urges right so 
If you find yourself here that you are you cannot control your urges, you're most likely a beta, right? And by this I don't mean that you can't you can do anything in your life like you have zero life and everything is revolving around that or that, or that like all of your life is just going around being a sissy or chastity or whatever. There's a lot of betas out there also who whose life are they don't know anything about these kind of fantasies, right? But they still cannot control themselves. But me as a woman, I cannot respect that, right? Like it just he's so easy manipulated, right? Like guys that are controlled by their thing down there are so easily manipulated and I see that and I can use that to my benefit, right? I'm not going to feel attracted to that, but like why would I not use that, right? She just said it. She said that people who are betas are easily manipulated. And why would she not use that to her benefit? Because it's easy to do. So that is why she continues to push men to be betas. She just said it. She wants to manipulate you. And she already knows that she can benefit from you. She finds you disgusting. So it's not like she's going to get confused and fall in love with you or get romantically attracted to you. That's not a problem for her. All she sees is an easy target anytime she sees a beta, and that's why she loves to normalize it. It's not that she doesn't want there to be alpha males. She just knows there's a greater chance that betas are going to come to her content. Alpha males, in her eyes, would never even view her content, so she doesn't really care or think about them. She knows who's going to come over here, and she knows who's going to pay her. So, since we're on that topic again of paying her, we're going to learn why Findom can improve your life to next the manipulation is about to get worse in this video i'm going to give you the reasons why i think financial domination is a very healthy type of fantasy or kink to have and why you should not fight it why you should surrender to it and have actually um it makes a lot of like spiritual and evolutionary and uh, genetic sense, all right? This video is in no way meaning to like manipulate you. I am not trying to give you some facts that I just like make up, even though, you know, I'm good at that too, to put you in that, you know, kind of hypnosis where you just can't help it but send but this video is going to be based on some facts all right so um as we all know men have for the entire you know history of humankind served women right like it's always men that go to war it's always men that hunt and it's it has always been men that provide right and um Men love giving to women. That's what I have noticed. You notice how she never mentions that men love to give money to their wives or their girlfriends? No, she always mentions that men love to give money to women. And she always have an agenda that she needs to push. And she is coming from the side of men love to give to women because she might see streaming services or OF or anything like that. But here's the thing I want to say about that. Men don't love giving to women in that way. Men just have nowhere else to go with that money. When men fall into that lust and they want to see something, of course they're going to give women money, but they don't give it to them for no reason. Let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of men give because they think they're going to get something back. They think they're going to get body parts, pictures, a shout out. Uh, get their name written on a board men don't just do this out of nowhere so she never mentions that when men give money to women they want a specific outcome and men get lost in this because they always think they're going to get it and they don't now i bet you weren't expecting this but this video is about to get a little bit spiritual we're going to be going into this kind of um more spiritual and um you know, energetical uh, science, which is that women are multipliers, right? So like you give a woman a sperm, she makes a baby. You give a woman a house, she makes a home. So whatever you give to her, she multiplies. So it has been proven that the men that give to women the most 
you know the woman can multiply multiply it energetically and you make more money in return right so the more you give to women the more you're gonna get back and um uh, yeah because why because women are multipliers right whatever we receive you receive back okay now this sounds like an mlm scheme doesn't it using spiritual teaching to manipulate people into spending but the only person who is benefiting is the person receiving the money have you as a man ever spent money on a woman and that money never multiplied it was just gone forever and you had to count it as a loss and you don't give a woman a house and she turns it into a home you give a wife a house and she turns it into a home Man, this is just so crazy how she continues to manipulate. And I thought when I saw this video, when she said that you can give somebody money and 10 exit, I knew at that point that she was completely bonkers. She was completely bonkers. But can you guess what video she immediately uploaded after this same day? Hi guys, my name is Bella. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we are going to be talking about manipulating slaves into sending money and how to get the most out of your slave and how to just milk him and what to do, all right? So, first things first, he might be at first a little bit resist like he might resist you know he might be like nah like this is not a good idea for me like i just don't want to spend a lot of money like i have to be i have to watch out especially if it's a slave that has been a lot of that has a lot of like fandom history you know like he's been doing this for a while he's not gonna be like he's gonna be like yeah like, maybe i should be more cautious right and that's just his defense mechanism. You just have to understand that he wants to send, right? So the last video was, hey men, send your money to women because it's what you're supposed to do and it will multiply. And then she immediately makes a video that is talking about, hey women, here's how to manipulate him into sending money. And let me say this, because she always gets this wrong. When you are in a femdom sub relationship, you are not supposed to be doing things to make the man suffer. You're not supposed to be milking him for money. You're supposed to care for him. There's supposed to be a relationship. If he says he's not comfortable sending money, you're supposed to be okay with that. You're not supposed to be like, mm, no, I got to seduce him and make his life worse because that's part of the fetish. No, you are not listening. You are being a controlling individual. That is not what femdom is. And that's why it gets a bad rap because of women like this who are just evil, who want to take every cent from a man, they don't care about them. They're supposed to be a relationship. And she says, well, if they don't feel comfortable, it's a defense mechanism. You want to kind of get him to play with himself first, right? Like get him worked up, right? Uh, get him really like, I would say edge him, like start edging him in a way that his release is dependent on you, right? So you're giving him the tasks to do that he has to fulfill until he can release, right? Um, and he has to, of course, be able to hold it because there's some people, they just can't hold it, right? So he has to be able to hold it, right? So get him... It's good if he's using toys that are kind of like not really gonna get him there. Like for example, something vibrating or something, right? Like it's going to be stimulating, but it's not going to like really allow him to, um, you know, release. And then um, another important thing is to use your feminine um, seduction skills, right? So wear something sexy, my are very visual um it's crazy like sometimes i'm like oh no not all men are visual but i'm telling you literally all men are visual like it's just it is blowing my mind how visual some men are and i mean all of them how visual all, all of them are so just keep that in mind men are very visual make sure to wear bright colors red lipstick um shiny things and 
have very soft movements, very sensual, something that he can just be like hypnotized by. Like you really have to use your feminine power to hypnotize him, right? Um, bright colors, shiny colors, um, sensual movements, um, seductive voice, and uh, denying him, all right? Denying him is very important because, like, you can't give him everything, right? Like, you have to make him pay for it, like, pay, like, really hard. Like, you really have to have him reach deep into his um, wallet, right? Until he is finally able to have a release from this amazing goddess because he knows if he doesn't obey her it's not gonna end up well for him right yeah see that's something your mind thinks it's not gonna end up well for him because it's something you would do because you would do blackmail and you would take pictures you would try to ruin his life that's something you would do that's not what a normal femdom would do they're not looking to destroy men's life so let's go back to this so she's pretty much talking about seduction. You simply need to use your body until he is about to finish, then make him spend money on you. This is dangerous because the way she speaks about this indicates that you are in the same room with him. So you want to take a man who is emotional, according to you, because he thinks with his private parts and you want to tell him he can't finish when his emotions are at the highest and make him give you money. What do you think would happen in that situation when a man comes back to his senses? For my men out there, tell me, what emotion snaps you out of your mood the fastest? Anger. When anger rises in a man during his peak or even after he finishes, he will snap back to reality the quickest. This makes no sense to wait until that moment to try to earn money. It would be safer to agree on an amount before then and even then being in the room with an emotional man that is not safe because you said he can't control himself and his urges but yet you want to put yourself in a room with him and then try to take his money and always make it sound like it was his idea right like it's his idea and it's good for him and he needs this and this is exactly what he's missing in his life like a lot of guys resist this right so you really have to brainwash him into thinking that he needs that and it's good for him and it is you know like this is not anything like woo woo stuff like th that's actually good for him like it's it's good to you know to have his money taken from a beautiful goddess right like men don't work for themselves they work for women so just take it right um anyways and always like by the end always make sure that he um give him a little bit of aftercare because afterwards some guys are like oh my god what what did i do again make him make sure to give him aftercare make sure make sure to reassure him that he has made the right decision and also like always keep some money with him so he feels like you really care about him so you, you don't like really rip everything off unless that's what you agreed on that's what um he likes um yeah so you heard it right there. She said you have to brainwash him and make him think that what he did was right. And then you need to give him aftercare to reassure him what you did was right. This is manipulation at its finest. She is literally telling you to seduce a man, brainwash him into spending all his money. And then when you do the aftercare, pretty much lie to him and say that he made a good decision. Because in the end, your only purpose was to get money out of him. So you're making it seem like it was his idea, but it wasn't. It's crazy that she can't see how evil that sounds or how evil that is. To do that to somebody, you're willing to ruin these men's life just because they had a bad moment and they came to see you when they were at their worst and they came to you and you could have easily took care of them and soothed them, maybe do a little bit of their kinks, but you don't do that. You get them to the point where they can't think straight and then say, hey, I'm going to seduce you out of all your money. She goes for the weakest types of men. She goes for the man who she knows is not going to be able to fight back, knows is not going to be able to think for themselves. And I just find that to be one of the worst things I could ever even imagine. It's awful. What I see um, happening a lot, especially in the Western world, which is that a lot of 
girls just don't want to be with the white boys anymore you know they're just like oh a black guy is definitely so much better than like a white guy you know um and i'm not a racist like this is not supposed to be a racist video like you know me better okay like i'm very i'm a very loving nice person <laughs> um but anyways we have to talk about it because this thing seriously affects the white guys that living in this country and then they turn to videos like this one you know they're like so desperate they don't know what to do because you know like you cannot make up for your lack of you know what you know so i want to tell you a story what happened to my friend she's a really nice girl a really beautiful and she had a really good guy boyfriend you know very educated he was a doctor you know and they were a cute couple of he was white okay and then she left him for a black football player right and i have been kind of following up i mean i haven't been asking him anything uh the white guy i mean but i've seen how much he changed and it was incredible like his confidence went down so bad and I'm not gonna be surprised if he's gonna be like watching my videos very soon but we need to talk about this because this happens to a lot of guys in the West and I don't see it just with black guys but I also see it with Arabic guys um, more so with Arabic guys you know there's just I have a couple of friends that you know just have babies from Arabic guys you know and the white guys just are left you know without repro re reproducing they cannot get a girl so you know the things that these guys usually do okay number one they go to other countries like southeast asia or south america because that's where they get respect and i see it here because i'm in southeast asia um they live like kings there like the women just literally like, go crazy about them you know so that's what they do i mean what's their left to do of course and number two they just accept that they're losers and they start watching my channel that's why my channel has been literally like booming you know like i didn't expect to get so many followers in such a short period of time you know especially in, about the topics that i'm talking about you know like because it's so specific like it's i didn't think it's so common but obviously it is you you knew she wasn't going to be able to resist the chance to talk about her channel blowing up. But let's go ahead and get into this. So BNWO, which means Black New World Order. So let's go ahead and dispel this stuff once again. OK, most races marry within their own race. So how are white men all of a sudden running out of white women because they are marrying Arabic men? But of course, she believes that white men are losers because of their private parts, as she stated in the beginning. It honestly feels like I'm listening to a teenager. It always comes down to who's bigger in the pants. She removes all humanity from men, which is also why she always mentions manipulation through seduction. She can't think about anything else. She keeps stating this lie that men begin to have insecurities and they immediately get turned on by it. I live in a small town. And last year, two men took their lives. When I lived in a big city, men took their lives when life got hard. I am sick of her saying that men turn to spending all their money and picking women who humiliate them when they begin to doubt themselves. It's not all about sex. This is frustrating because she believes the world revolves around one thing. She has no idea what men are going through in the last moments. Be because she has certain men in her comments, she thinks that the majority of the world thinks this way when the stats tell us that men have less friends and they have less sex more than ever before. The sub count has gone to her head and she's becoming more dangerous. She keeps asking men to give everything because of their dick size. Nothing else matters to her. I rarely hear about love, family, passion, dreams. Nope. Dick size, kinks, fetishes, and sex. So she thinks that when a man is going through an insecurity, he's down on himself. The only thing he thinks about is 
man, how can I get humiliated by this? How can I spend all my money? And then she doesn't think about what happens after that. What do you think a man does when he runs out of money and then he runs out of everything? Because you have literally stated that if a man doesn't really have money, he can't even speak to you. So let's talk about that. So if a man runs out of money and he runs out of everything in his life and you won't even speak to him anymore, what do you think happens? Oh, he just goes find some other way to be humiliated? No, these men find other ways out and those ways are not good so i'm just kind of sick of hearing her always talk about ah oh, when men get in trouble <laughs> you know what they want to be humiliated and you know what it's because their dick is small at this point it's just stupid and i'm not saying she's stupid like i said before i think that she's calculated now i don't think she always knows what she's talking about but she does know how to manipulate a man the reason I say it's stupid is because she has all the knowledge available to her and she just chooses either to ignore it or try to make you ignore it. And it's awful for men because she keeps telling you, turn to sex, guys, turn to sex. And she got to the point where she even says, turn to castration. And I didn't show this video because I didn't want to get too crazy, but she had an entire video on how you should transition how you should become a sissy, how you should do everything in your power to become a female. Because guess what? Your dick is too small and you're not a real man. So recently she got a little bit of heat on her because she made a video about exposing a guy and all these other things. And so now she's starting to kind of backpedal and she made this video talking about her honest opinion on betas and submissive men. Hi guys, my name is Bella. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I am going to actually share my honest opinion with you about submissive males, about this whole femdom industry, and um, first things first, I want you guys to know that I really support you, you know, like, this is why I started this channel for you guys, and this is something that I felt like needed to be talked about, but I'm going to be, like, super, um filter free in this video and tell you my honest opinion about beta males about submissive males and what i think about it right so you guys have to understand that being a submissive male is a sign of weakness right like this is not something that like be and being weak is bad okay like this world needs strong people, I think. So it is a sign of weakness and we have to go, go to the root of where this weakness came from. And I believe from what I have seen, most of the cases is one of the two, either their confidence and mental health is crashing really badly. Oh my God, what am I? Okay, <laughs> and the other one is that um you have been consuming too much pee right so which one of them are you and maybe you're a combination of both of them so i think that these people are really like down bad right and i know a lot of you guys are watching this video and it's actually exciting you what i'm saying because I have gotten this kind of feedback on this kind of video that you guys really like it when I talk like this about you. So you can see this video was supposed to be about mental health and how being submissive and being a beta is a problem. But you now know why she made the video. Because she said that once again, it excites men for her to talk about this. She is always in this constant mindset of being in that savior complex she brings up mental health as if she actually wants to help this man but we have seen time and time again that she takes pleasure in destroying men she just mentioned the only reason she talked about this is because it excites men who are struggling that's her only purpose is to push men who are down bad to a place where they fully accept that this is their life so that they will play and pay for her forever and she can suck them dry of all their resources. And once all their resources are drained, she's going to either block them or wait until they get paid again and drain them again and drain them again and drain them again. So no matter what she does, her mindset never changes. 
Now we're about to watch another video, but please remember she makes videos in the same day. So this seems like the same video, but it's actually a video from the previous day. Hello guys, my name is Bella. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we are going to be talking about how to get any man to whatever you want him to do. <laughs> All right. And this applies to fandom related stuff and not fandom related stuff. So, um, yeah. One thing that women have to understand about the male psychology and that also if you're a man watching me, you have to understand about your own psychology that you maybe have not realized before or maybe you have, is that they don't think with their brain, they think with that thing down there, okay? They just, they're just so easily, you know, malleable just by you know just by that thing down there just like turn him on and he's gonna do whatever you want right and um i have seen this repeat all over again so we're gonna get deeper into it so first of all if you want a man to do whatever you want him to do you have to stop putting him on a pedestal and you have to stop begging okay like if you want him to do something I don't know what it is. It cannot be from a place of begging. Um, yeah, unless it works for you and you are in this, you're this like super soft feminine girl and whatnot. Maybe it's gonna work for you, but it doesn't usually. So uh, yeah, I do not recommend begging. <laughs> Anyways, what can you do? Instead of that, is just be confident that the thing that you're asking for, um, you deserve it, right? Like whether it's money or something else, or it's a task that you are giving him to do that he's capable of doing that first and foremost, and number two, that you deserve it. You have to have the confidence. You have to ask him, ask him this with the confidence. It has to shine from you that whatever you are asking for you deserve it, right? Like, you can have it and it's expected. Now, she's just gonna go on to say what she's been saying this entire video that I've made, but that statement right there is why I ended up making this video when I did. I was already gonna make a video on her, but I thought it was gonna be a little bit more positive. Now, you remember when I made that cook video, I said to be careful with watching her content because she is more femdom than a cuckoldress. However, at that time, I did not realize how bad it was. I thought the video was going to be more about her as a femdom, and it was going to be positive, truly. But when I saw this video, I knew that she was not normal in her thinking, because I know about the femdom in the BDSM community, as I love to learn about these sectors, and there was a lot of information on aftercare, communication, taking responsibility, and trust. There was even talk about how after each session, you would speak about if you wanted to continue or if you would like to part ways. If both parties decided to move forward, there would be a dom and a sub relationship and that would form and there would be mutual care for each other. But that's not what this young lady did right here. This creator was full of manipulation. She does not care about the men that she wants to be submissive to her. She always wants money and power. She would do anything to get that. I have laid out everything I can to help you avoid people like her. Please do not go to people like her when you are down on yourself or even when you feel good about yourself. If you engage with this content creator, she will most likely strip you to the bones and will have her hand out asking for more money from you. Femdom is not this. This is a terrible person hiding behind femdom. Ball busting, castration, blackmail, destroying men's lives. I have never really come across a creator that I felt more strongly about. Now, I made a video on other people that I didn't agree with. I've made videos talking about people I don't agree with. But this person is the worst because she has so much content. And I know she is growing at an extreme rate. Because when I first found her, I believe she was not at 40,000 subscribers yet. I may have found her maybe when she was less than that, but it definitely wasn't this much. And so she is starting to grow at an extreme rate. And YouTube is pushing her videos out there. Because when she talks about a certain topic, her name comes up. Because she's not afraid to go there. Unlike other people who make this kind of content, who talk about femdom, who talk about being sissies, 
they don't go this far because they have a care in their voice. They're trying to be genuine. They're trying to educate. They're trying to make sure you don't get into something you shouldn't be a part of. The difference between her and she'll make a video. It's only like five minutes long. And she's going to say, yeah, you should totally be a submissive. Yeah, you should totally get castrated. Yes, you need to give up all your money. You need to be a pay pig. She doesn't educate the people. She doesn't teach anybody anything. She go gets the bare information about stuff and then spews it out. She goes and says, hey, this is what it means to be a cuck hey this is what it means to be this she just looks up something small and then talks about it as if she knows about it but she truly doesn't all she knows is how to take everything from a man how to get a man to be manipulated by you and even when it comes to that though i think she is calculated she's not even teaching you anything that crazy about manipulation she's saying hey the best way to get a man to do something is to get him hard pretty much that's all it comes down to for her and anytime she talks about a man she immediately goes to well if your penis isn't big then you need to be a cuck even though that's not even what it means to be a cuck at all or if your penis isn't good you may lose your girlfriend to a black guy or an arabic guy or if your penis isn't too big then you need to go ahead and get yourself cash rated that's all it ever comes down to but let me take a step back let me take a step back and just tell you why i do this men there is going to come a time in your life where you're going to be at your very worst okay i've been there i've been at my lowest okay overweight i'm short and i felt the worst i've ever felt in my life i know what it feels like to be broke i know what it feels like to have some woman humiliate you i've been through all this i've been cheated on i've gone through a lot of the things that you may be going through there was a point in my life where i was sitting in my bedroom contemplating contemplating if i wanted to keep going if i wanted to keep living life i was that down but the one thing I did differently is I went to men. I went to men to try to build myself back up. I went to people who cared about me, people who wanted to see me succeed in life. And they kept helping me out, even though I just kept falling right on my face. But if you go to somebody like this, this person is not going to help you. They are going to destroy you. I know sometimes you want to just give in to the weakness that you're feeling at this moment. And you're like, well, I can find a woman who wants me to be this way. Maybe I am weak. Maybe I am disgusting. Maybe I am a loser. And you go find somebody to validate that and make it real for you. And it's not going to work. I am telling you from experience. I have been in a relationship that a girl wanted it to be open. I've thought about being a cuck. I've been part of that BDSM. I've done the sub life. I've been submissive. I am here to tell you that is not the way to go. But I remember the world telling me and women telling me that's what I should do. But these people did not care about me. I have spent all my money. I made a whole video talking about how I spent $3,000 on a woman and got nothing out of it. I have made the stupid decisions to go this route. And I don't want to see you go down this route because you don't have the knowledge and you believe that this is the way to go. This woman will feed on you and she will destroy your life. We saw her blackmail a man and she is continuing to blackmail this man. So I only make this video to keep you away from people like this and to warn you and to warn you about content like this. So please listen to what I'm saying. I'm only trying to help you, but you can make your own decisions. But I'm not telling you anything that I have not been through myself. I love you guys. And please share this with a friend if he is down or he is thinking about going through with this life or he's hearing these messages that are trying to manipulate him. Show him this video and show him the type of people that are coming for him so he can learn. He does not have to go down this route. Once again, thank you for watching. Much love. Goodbye.